Hello, hello. It is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for joining me. I am here with Tony Nee of Sound Toys. Tony, how are you doing? Good. How are you? So good to be here. Yeah, great to have you. And Tony is going to be walking us through a really cool plugin called Superplate. I'm going to bring it up here on screen. Superplate is the newest plugin from Sound Toys. And this one is really interesting to me because, first of all, if you've ever tried Little Plate, you already know it sounds awesome. And if you haven't tried a little plate, just go and try it out for free. Go over to soundtoys.com where you can try it for free for 30 days. Just a great sounding, inexpensive, simple to use plate reverb. Just really awesome, luscious, rich, dark, organic. Yes. But this new one has more than just one plate model now. You guys have, let's count them, one, two, three, two, four, three, five. five. Yes, five different plate models, and some of them totally classic, you know, coveted units. Some of them are a little bit more esoteric and unfamiliar to people, and all of them sound really interesting. But you guys have yeah. a whole bunch of features in here that I think are going to be surprising. Uh, right below this section where people can see the different plate models, the Classic 140, the Gold Foil 240, the Autocon, there's these little buttons down here that allow you to select between the front end input and this, I was surprised at how much this changed the tone, yes. Tony. Yeah, really cool. And then my favorite thing here, if you click the tweak button on this, and this is the thing I really want people to stick around for in this demo, this auto decay function, it's like an automatic decay shortening. It's a way of doing reverb ducking. That's amazing. That lets you get away with much longer reverb times than I think you can get out of conventional reverbs. Yeah. So I'm really excited to hear you uh, talk us through this thing, Tony. We'll start off with just Tony kind of walking us through each uh, aspect of it here. We'll sure. take questions in the end after we've gone through it all. And let us know we're doing this one as a live stream. This is fun. The, one of the first live streams we're doing with audio examples. So if you need me to turn anything up or down, either of our voices or the audio in there, just let me know there in the chat box. So without yes. any further ado, uh, Tony, can you take us for, for a spin, walk us through the GUI and let us hear some sounds? Of course. Hey Mixcon right. and hey YouTube, I'm, I'm so excited to show you Superplate and this is Soundtoy's uh, reverb plugin and it's a plate plugin. So as Justin already said, we worked on Little Plate a few years ago, which was modeled after a, an e EMT 140 plate reverb. And a lot of people might be already familiar with the sound of Little Plate. So for this release, we have uh, four more plates on top of EMT 140 for a total of five different plates. So we've got a classic 140 style uh, after the EMT 140 plate reverb, and we have a gold foil 240, which is a EMT 240 uh, plate reverb that is made from an extremely thin gold foil and has a darker sound and an overall overall shorter decay. And then next up, we have Otacon, which is based off of the Otacon the Plate 2 built by Lawson in the 70s. This is a very famous Nashville plate, and it was used um, kind of as a replacement of EMT-140 when the studios couldn't find one, and it had a punchier and brighter sound and much more sparkle on your signal. So we can go down to Echo Plate 3. I know it's spelled E.play, but it's named Echo Plate, uh, and it's built by Jim Cunningham of Studio Technologies in Illinois back in the 80s. Now, this plate is amazing. It's bright and it's famous for being used on albums such as Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones, George Benson. So if you want that classic 80s sound on that percussion and whatnot, um, even brass instruments, Echo Play 3 would be your choice. And last but not least, this is Stocktronics, Stocktronics RX 4000 plate. And this is a Swedish plate reverb with a very unique sound as the cold forged stainless steel plate is only 0.3 millimeters sick, uh, thick, not sick. I'm sick today. <laughs> Super bright and tons of characters. So yeah, so we've got five different plate options that Sound Toys, we purchased these plates uh, and we flown them in and we refurbished them and we spend years taking measurements, doing analysis of the plate. So, and now they're um, uh, all five in one in a little plugin that you can use in your computer to get that classic studio sound. And Beautiful. So, One thing I want to yeah. mention really quick, Tony, here is that uh, Ken, who is the owner and kind of lead developer of Sound Toys, he has like a museum. It is insane. It's a warehouse full it's a warehouse. of old analog gear. He has one of the biggest collections of synthesizers I've ever seen. He has a ton of these plates. And to my understanding, you guys must have went through a whole bunch of plates to end up with this selection and with these sounds. Yeah. So I think this is an interesting thing. There was thing. a fight. 
<laughs> yeah, about what to include and which yeah. which version of the EMT 140 it should be because you guys have more yeah. than one EMT 140 oh, yeah. there. This that you EMT chose 140 between. is the one that we modded ourselves, so it's actually a a, a the only EMT 140 plate that sounds the way it does from oh, little wow. plate to super plate. So it's really cool. And what's cool is the EMT 140 uh, reverb used to have two different preamps, and this comes into the three different uh, input modes we are t we are talking about. So the preamp mm -hmm. section on these reverb plate units had uh, had an effect on what the reverb sounded like because, uh, for example, we start with the left one, and this little button here signifies for the tube saturation style, which is based off of the EMT V54 tube preamp. And what it does is it harmonically saturates the signal, which can push your reverb signal just like one more step further and make you feel all the presence in it. And it just sounds really warm and luscious. And we also modeled the EMT v, uh, 160, EMT 162 preamp, which is a solid state uh, preamp that had a built-in compressor that was not user tweakable. So what it does was it was kind of a, a, a circuit protection for overloading, just so that um, it doesn't peak all over the place. But a lot of studio engineers tend to use it to kind of smash the signal before it hits the reverb. So it has its own characteristics as well. And this, these two preamps were only available to the EMT 140 preamp uh, options, but we thought that it might be cool to be able to utilize it with any of the five plates. So what we did was we, we modeled the two different preamps plus a clean option all the way to the right. So you have five different plates and three different input modes to choose from and kind of get your mix and match your own sound for the reverb. And that's just, you know, like less than a quarter of the display that we're talking about. And there's so much more than that. I believe it. Now, before we get too much deeper and talk about it too much, I'd love to just, if it's possible, can you give us a quick whirl between the, the sounds of these different input Let's sections and plates so we can get a sense for it? Yeah. Sweet. So I have it on a full drum bus right now. So we're going kind of like all, all drums out today. And I'm going to turn the mix knob closer to 100% what probably like 75%. So here we go. Yeah, here no, is a classic EMT 140 sound. Big, epic. Mm -hmm. So now we let's go down to the gold foil 240. Totally different. Totally different. It's a lot darker and shorter and more like pow. That yeah, kind of it's, it's almost halfway between like a spring reverb and a plate reverb. Really interesting, yeah. complex tone. It's that gold foil, I'm telling you. And then next yeah. up is Otacon. Oh, wow, the tail on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally different. The tail on it opens up. There's a shimmery quality to it. Very cool. Yep. So now let's go to Echo Plate 3. Mm, another really dark one, but not as short as the gold foil. Could you flip between the gold foil and the Echo Plate 3? Here's gold foil. Ooh. An echo Plate. Yeah, with a gold foil, it almost sounds like a gated plate, like it uh, really shortens Really the short. Really yeah. short, yeah. But it's so big before it gets short. Beautiful. Yeah. And let's hear that Stocktronics. That high end. Wow. So yeah. much different. So yeah. So th those are the five different sounds or plate styles we call call it. And, um, and that's just half of the equation. Now let's talk about the three different input styles. So... Let's go back to the classic 140. I think it's one. It's still one of my favorite classic plate to go to, you know. But let's hear how it reacts with a clean style input mode, a transistor um, solid state based style, and a tube saturation style. Here we go. So here's clean. Let's let's add a bit of tube saturation. Yeah, it really rounds it out. Yeah. And go back to clean again. Yeah, just a little bit clearer, the and more edges there, yeah. Yeah, and let's talk let's look go to the solid state with the compression built in. Mm. There's this additional mid range focus that's happening here for me. Can you switch back and forth between those two again?
Ah, it's so interesting what it's doing to the decay of the snare drum for me. When you're yeah. listening to the snare drum, really opens up when we're in that straight wire with gain mode, where there's no, um, there's none of that solid state compression on. As soon as you put on that yeah. compressor input, it just kind of evens everything out. And instead of the snare being the one thing that makes the reverb blossom, it's yeah. a little bit more consistent across the whole kit, and it gives it a sense of kind of focus. Um, but it's, it's less bright and more focused at the same time. Really interesting. Yeah. And what's really cool is the uh, input and the output on our plugin for Superplate only affects the reverb volume. Well, the input technically affects the input, uh, the dry signal going into the reverb, but it won't turn the dry signal up in the mm -hmm. actual plugin. So you can drive the input as how you would kind of like doing a bus send on the console to the reverb. So you can drive it up and get more harmonic saturation if you want, and then just kind of go from there. So we can play around with the tube saturation, for example, and let's try Echo Play 3 and just drive it up and see what happens. It's just more options mm -hmm. and more of that studio, um, like where somebody's like, oh, I want everything a little bit hotter. Let's just turn the input up a little bit more and drive the preamp. And I, what I like about this plugin is right now I'm using it on, um, you know, using the mix knob about, uh, if you, by the way, if you click on our plugins, if you click on the parameter name, it will show you what the actual number value is. So right now I'm about 80% uh, dialed in. So typically you might use reverb on an auxiliary track with 100% wetness dialed in. But with this plugin and all the cool features I'm going to show you, you can actually sometimes get away with just using the plugin directly on the bus like I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So just so I understand a little bit better with the input knob, it is really functioning as uh, input gain control. So you're driving the input stage harder without turning it up so you get more compression in that solid state input mode you'll get a little bit more saturation in that uh, tube mode and Correct. there shouldn't be too significant of a change in that third mode i'd imagine no it's just you know louder <laughs> yep <laughs> so, and yeah then the output knob is that actually changing the level that's coming back from the reverb that's going to have effect on how loud the reverb ultimately is so that one is actually changing uh our, our final gain yeah let's hear it Oh, gotcha. So it's it's changing just the reverb level. Essentially but it's a, not... a volume fader for separate for the reverb. Interesting. So it yeah. operates separately from the mix control. So it's not happening post-mix. It's happening before the mix knob. Yes. And we have an interesting thing on the mix knob too. So typically a mix knob will just dial in the effect. But as sound toys, we found that normally when you're using the mix knob, like it, it's not really a linear experience. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of uh, like uh, a change in the sense that so if we go from dry to about 70%, you'll get a slower decline of the dry signal, but a much more exponential uh, increase of the reverb volume. And then when you go past 70%, the, there is a sudden quick dip of the dry signal and a much stronger gain on the reverb side. So it kind of plays around with how you would dial up like a dry fader and a wet fader on a console. Right. So, so you're really trying to cool. make the experience feel more linear by making it actually less linear under the hood. Correct. Yes. Uh, that reminds me of like uh, using an old school, like a uh, big tube Fender guitar amp where uh, mm. so much of the volume change happens between like zero and one and trying to find yes. <laughs> the exact right spot is so hard. I'm always scared to play with those because it's like if I take it just a little bit too far and it's feedback all day long. Yeah, and a lot of reverbs are like that, where if I'm going to use a reverb uh, directly as an insert, often it's like, oh, was was 5% better or was 6% better? <laughs> and just the fact yeah. that you're able to kind of have a more human way to, and especially for things like um, automating your reverb changes, it's going to really open up ability to do yeah. that as an insert. Because right now, people have to do a lot of reverb automation by using aux ends, by using yep. return channels, but be, to be able to in a very human way, automate a, a mix knob. That is yeah. going to be, that's a sleeper 
that, that is a sleeper benefit of this one that people I don't yeah. think are going to discover until they really use it. That, right. That's I mean, a lot of it is just like, why does it sound so great? Because there's a lot more complex things that are being done under the hood. So when you're using it, you're just playing, you know, it's a sound toy. It's, it's sound toys. Yeah. It's toys. So uh, let's yeah. move on. So we've got our big Please. classic decay knob in the middle, just like little plate. And mm -hmm. what's cool is the red band over here signifies all the values that were not physically possible on the original plate units. So mm -hmm. If you go forth all the way down to infinity, then what you get is, let me just play real quick. And pause. You get this freezing effect on the reverb. So be very careful with that feature, but it can create a uh, significant amount of uh, reverb that could, you know, I, I think sound designers love that feature and a lot of guitar players love that feature. So that's uh, the decay knob and you can use, use the knob or you can click on the numbers to jump to all of it. So that works too. And next to it, we've got a pre-delay option built in. So that's something that wasn't available on Little Play that a lot of users requested. And I think it's mm -hmm. great that we have it. So it goes from zero milliseconds all the way to 250 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool is because Superplate now is available as an additional license to purchase for the effect rack, you can actually mm -hmm. chain Echo Boy or any of the um, Echo plugins we have in effect rack before Soundtoys uh, Superplate to get a DAW MIDI synced pre-delay. So if you are somebody who is like, I love a, 16, uh, a 164th note pre-delay, throw it in effect rack and put uh, Echo Boy in front of it. And then there you have a more like uh, musical pre-delay. But if you're just like, I just want a little bit more like 100 milliseconds, here you can have a set. And of course, modulation, which was just a flip on Little Plate, now has a full 0% of depth, 100% uh, depth control. And what this does is it adds a, a little bit of pitch variation through an LFO that you can also access by the tweak menu here to choose the rate. And it goes from 0.2 hertz all the way up to 8 hertz. So this can create sometimes a smoother reverb tail that doesn't have a lot of resonances uh, building up in a specific frequency. So it really uh, adds a, a touch of smoothness to the signal. So, gotcha. Could you give us a little bit yeah. of an audio example of uh, how the modulation would feel? And That's maybe so. the pre-delay as well. Sure. So let's turn the pre-delay up. Mm -hmm. Get that separation. Mm -hmm. And modulation, let's turn it up. That's a very subtle one, I will say. It's a very yeah. subtle. I, I hear this little bit of extra kind of uh, warble. There's this um, very slight additional pulse to it that I feel. Yeah. That, yeah, you really feel it just on the sustain of it a little bit. Cool. Yeah. And sometimes it might be hard to translate over the internet when you're listening on YouTube as well. So, <laughs> sure. But that being said, it's one of those uh, knobs that. A, it's it's there. You just kind of have to keep working with it until you on. You're like ah, the one day you're gonna be like oh yeah. So let's move down to filter section. So again, I uh, we have a tweak menu here that you'll be able to actually see what the filters are doing if we do that. But mm -hmm. when you're if you're just looking at the at the surface, there are just two knobs that are acting as a low cut filter and a high cut filter. But what's really cool is we enabled uh, slope options, which is uh, dBs per octave uh, on the low and the high cut band. So we can go from 24 dBs per octave to 6 dBs per octave on both bands, uh, which is amazing if you want to do a sharper cut or if you want to just gently roll off the low end. And what's really nice is, um, so as you already see that we're, we, we, ha we add an EQ, hallelujah, to the um mm. to the plugin so we have a two band fully parametric eq uh that you can choose the q like the center frequency just by dragging but you can also ch change the q or the bandwidth of the bell 
um, by holding down Control and Scroll on Mac or Alt mm. on Windows. So this is something really cool because you can quickly tame resonance frequencies by you know sweep and duck. I like how you've added that all that additional control without kind of cluttering up the interface with a ungodly number of uh, <laughs> knobs <laughs> yeah. to look at. Yeah, that's, that's what cool. I love about this tweak menu. So yeah, let's listen to it real quick. And what's really cool is there is an on and off button for the EQ, but it does not affect the low and the high cut. It only oh, affects yeah. the EQ bands. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's one of those little moments where I'm like, oh, this is nice. So yeah, let's take a quick listen. Here is, let's get rid of all of the EQs and we just, let's play around with the signal and fit it into the mix. So yeah, very quick and easy, and you get a great sounding EQ right in the box. And um, the EQs only affect the reverb signal, not the dry signal. So mm -hmm. you can go hard, but it won't affect the dry drums in this case. Very cool. Let's talk about auto decay. Yes, this is one of the, the one thing that really impressed me the most when I heard you guys doing some demos. It, it makes sense that you have this, it makes a little bit of sense that you have this infinity hold function on the the reverb where you could literally have an infinite reverb time but it makes more sense that you have it once people know how the auto decay works because it lets you yeah. get away with much longer reverb times than you otherwise would be able to do uh, yeah, yeah walk us through conceptually how it works and then let's hear it so typically one producer might control the reverb by adding a sidechain compressor after the reverb that is chained to the dry signal. So every time the dry signal goes beyond the threshold, the reverb volume is turned down. However, what that does not do is shorten the actual reverb as the mm -hmm. signal goes louder. So what we did is we implemented a feature called auto decay that is kind of like a compressor, but instead of turning down the volume, is turning down the actual decay value. So the reverb tail gets shortened as loud as you go, and then it com comes back up to the original position when you're quieter and below the threshold. So let's take a listen. Um, I'm going to keep it on like a 16 second decay mm -hmm. just to try it. <laughs> yeah, so sure. he here's three different controls you'll see under the tweak menu for auto decay. We have the threshold, that is the decibel value at which the auto decay kicks in. And then we have the target here, which is like a decay knob, but what it does is it's the uh, you have to set it to a shorter value than the current reverb decay value so that it shortens mm -hmm. it to the um, target. Kind of like a ratio if you think about it. And then we have the recovery control, which changes how fast or how slow the decay goes back to its original position. So you can make it super fast, or if you want to breathe with the rhythm of the music, uh, you might be able to slow it down a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and start, let's say I want a, a ducking to one second. So I set target to one and uh, recovery wise, let's go for just like 250 milliseconds, nice and slow for now. Mm -hmm. And then all we have to do is play the signal and turn the threshold down and you'll observe a yellow ring kind of acts as a meter. Mm -hmm. We'll see it. And you can play with the target too yeah. if you want more reverb. Bring it up. Let's let's say four seconds. So now it's ducking the reverb from sixteenth second to four second. Very cool. But Tony, I think one example I'd love to to hear would be if we could make it slightly le uh, less complex by can you solo just the snare drum across that bus? Because I think there we can get a sense for it's only going to happen. Yeah, I'll bring it right back up. Yeah. Because this is without it. Lots of reverb. Yeah. Let me turn the mix up a little bit more. Dialed in.
and we can change the recovery so it's fast. Or slow. That's interesting. Yeah. And it's really cool because by timing it to the rhythm of whatever signal you're playing with, it actually kind of acts as a uh, like a dialogue between the reverb and the instrument. So on snare, for example, it really helps bring out the smack and the initial impact of the snare transient if you have the threshold just set below the, th uh, the transient peaks. So, but then you still get that big uh, reverb coming right after the transient, but while maintaining a sense of dry and impactfulness. Right. Yeah. So what can be happening here, it sounds like, is you have a snare drum hit and you can have as long of a reverb on it as you want. You can have extremely long, loud, complex reverb. And then when that next snare hit comes in, it basically turns down or shortens that reverb so yeah. you can hear the attack of this new snare unimpeded. So yeah. I think we can really hear this example well on snare. One of the things that was really amazing to me when I heard you guys do a, a demo of it live at NAMM when it came out is, uh, I don't know if we have a, a demo like this we can play for people right now, but just to describe it to them, um, one of your guys, I think it was your customer support guy, took a guitar. Oh, Can't Walker his name. with a guitar, yeah. Yes. So Walker plugged in a guitar and he played some like really harmonically rich, harmonically dense chords. And he would play one chord and just let it sit for a bar or two with this infinite reverb on it. And then he would play another chord and then another chord. And normally what would happen if you're changing chords is there becomes this, you know, chaotic soup, this dissonant soup because you hear all of the reverb from all of the prior chords ringing over your new chord. Yeah. But with this ducking, when he was able to play a new chord, it would duck down or basically eliminate the reverb from the prior chords yeah. and you just hear the reverb on the new chord. So you get this sense of unbroken long reverb, but without yeah. the adding harmonic dissonance that comes from uh, several different chords being played yeah. on top of each other. So that was one of the places where I thought it really shined the most is on things that have changes in um, tonality, in harmonic content over time, where you want there to be long reverb on it, but you don't want increasing um, dissonance and chaos yeah. in that sound. Guitar you get is control a great chaos. one. Yeah. yeah, synth is a great one as well, and vocal, yeah. of course. Um, it's, it, this is one of those moments where uh, every musician is going to find their own way of using this plugin, uh, auto decay feature specifically. But overall, we designed it so it, it, one, helps clean up the reverb and give it a sense of motion in the mix. Two, this is, again, I don't think any other plugins we've researched has something like this. And a lot of times people have to automate the decay themselves yes, yes. through automation to do this. So we thought, well, I th this is a great way of combining both things so you can kind of play with it. And we really would love our customers to like play into Superplay while they're creating music and kind of yeah. react to Superplay. And I think that's a great way of getting started. A hundred percent. I think that auto decay feature is absolutely something you could play into and create new ideas and even new songs and new parts off of it. Just like yeah. you have someone like The Edge, right? Who would, you know, plug into all of these pedals and hit a single note and that would be his part. I You, yeah. can, you can use it as an accessory to instruments in that way. That Just like the old days it. in the studio when, you you know, you guys are making magic in the, uh, in the recording booth and then the control room were just like, oh, that's great. Was that recorded? Oh, thank God it was recorded. But here <laughs> it's in the computer. So it's, you know, you can record it now, go back and tweak it later via automation if you want to there's even more flexibility to how you want to create music. And what we also did, another thing uh, next to all, all the decay is our stereo control. And this is actually, I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, but Little Plate was a mono in stereo out plugin, which meant mm. whatever signal you fed through it is going to be some to mono first, like a plate reverb that's mono in studio. Sure. With Super Plate, it is a true stereo in and stereo out device. So essentially, it's like having two plates, one on the left channel, one on the right channel. Mm -hmm. And it will react to how your signal is panned in the space. So we, we have two controls. One is for width, and this will just, you know, at zero, sums the reverb to mono. At 100, spread it out so there is a, a lot more space in the middle for like a vocal or a guitar. And of course, we have a balance control that tilts the image to left or right 
or if you have the width set to zero, the balance knob essentially becomes a pan control for the mono reverb. So it, we thought of a lot of different ways that people might be using this reverb. And we thought that stereo control, auto decay, and modulation plus EQs, these are some of the features that, you know, you don't have to find another plugin afterwards. It's all baked into one plugin. Very cool. So um, question here. It sounds like to get the closest sound we could to Little Plate out of this, we would probably select the um, Classic 140. Um, this knob in the center with the decay time is pretty similar. Um, yep. So you, that would be flexible. You'd have pre-delay off, and you would actually have a little bit of modulation turned on in the Little yes. Plate by default, right? And yes. then there would also be um, the width control would be turned all the way to the left. And that would be a thing because we're making the input mono. So when we look at the stereo width control, it's not changing the output necessary necessarily. So if you go all the way left on the width to zero, you're now getting mono input but stereo output. And if you turn all the way to the right, you get stereo input and stereo output. Am I understanding it right, or am I understanding that wrong? I think I think uh, think of the width more as a uh, how just how wide you want the reverb around the source you could have a stereo recorded let's say percussion with like uh left percussion right percussion with with to zero you'll still hear the dry signal having panned but the reverb is going to be in the middle gotcha so yeah. it's more of a, a widening or monoizing just the reverb itself but what's cool is it's kind of like you in the middle it's like a happy medium but at 100 it is super wide so then you get this, like, that modern, big reverb sound that everybody loves. Um, and then if you're like, okay, this guitar, there's already a lot of things happening. This guitar needs a tiny bit of, like, reverb, uh, just kind of like on a mono spring reverb vibe, but in plate. So then you can just have it to a zero, and now all of the reverb will come out in the middle. And then if you pan the guitar to the left, for example, um, and you can balance using our balance pan control here to kind of go get the reverb to the same place as the guitar. Gotcha. So that actually is going to yeah. be really helpful if people are using this as an insert. So you yeah. could just inside this plugin get this kind of effect where you're potentially panning your reverb off to one side yeah. without having to set up uh, aux ends. Very yes. cool. So um, I want to take questions from the audience here. You've done a great job of walking this thing through. While I'm giving folks a chance to type in their questions, we are 100% live right now. So type in your questions and we will answer them live. And while I'm giving you guys a chance to do that, I see some questions have come in already. We'll be answering those in just a second. Can you give us one more playthrough for anyone who's joining us live a little late of Let's each of these models, the uh, Classic 140 all the way through to the Stocktronics? Let's do it. Once I saw So let's solo the drums. Sure. And I'm gonna get the auto decay working a little bit more. So here's classic 140. Let's go to 240. And here's Otacon. Echo plate three. Wow, so dark, so complex, Very really cool. Rich, yeah. yeah. Stocktronic. Wow, it's just so light and airy. It's there really are dramatically different flavors on each. Very of different. And I for mean, anyone, these plates, the, the the real plates are so like physically different from each other. Like EMT one forty is a giant plate, and some of these plates are like smaller like than my table probably so it's it's like we definitely chose five of the uh most diverse and authentic flavors we thought that would work great across a different a, a variety of genres yeah in case people aren't familiar with them here's some photos of them. i'm going to bring them up on my screen here here's the inside of a emt 140 plate the very first thing that's modeled in here uh, here's one that's yeah. selling for fifty three hundred dollars which is a steal <laughs> for an emt plate um, it looks like, uh, I'm not sure if it's all original or not. It doesn't have like a, the complete box that I'm used to, but uh, that is one maybe yeah. refurbished by Jim Cunningham. So it's an EMT 140. That's what that guy looks like. Big Mama Jama, the classic original. Yeah. 
Next, here are some pictures of the 240. This one is way smaller and makes sense why the decay time is so much shorter on it. It looks more like the size of a spring reverb and uh, just totally different. I mean, it's, it's a fraction of the size. This must be one sixth the size of a EMT 140, like I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. But really distinctive sound. It, it has almost a spring like quality for a plate. Um, but a little bit less of that boinginess that you get out of a, yeah. a s true spring. Here's now some photos for you guys of this Autocon The Plate 2. Th these are some I'm finding here. Lawson Vintage? I don't even know if I'm coming up with... Here it is, Autocon Plate 2. Here's some interesting photos of this one yes. from the 1980s. Wild, cool. I, I don't think I've ever seen one of these in person. Here's the Echo Plate 3. Let's see. This one is... A little bit more like the design of an EMT 140, but it's a maybe a little bit smaller. And this is the one that sounded to me like the 140, but just so much darker. Yeah, really interesting sound. And then here's the Stocktronics, which is so kind of bright and airy and shimmery. And this looks a lot like an EMT 140. It's a big, long box, um, beautiful old school wood grain uh, finish here. Yeah, but um, again, just entirely different sound uh, from the EMT 140. So really cool. If you guys had never seen those before, that is what they look like. And let me- Good thing is you don't have to old. physically carry them anymore because we have oh, super plate now. Yes. <laughs> the only one you could even possibly do that with, with one person would be that uh, gold foil 240. The that EMT would be like a really yeah. heavy p piece of luggage. You could do some like uh, suitcase carries with that as a workout. But for any of those yeah. others, you would need like at least a two man lift on those. And, for sure. Uh, yeah, probably if you want to be safe, uh, probably three people is encouraged. So very cool stuff. Now, Tony, uh, I'm going to check what questions have come into the chat box here. Sweet. And I'll suggest to you guys, if you've just joined here at the end, I thought at the beginning you could hear some of those differences even more before we put any of those settings on. We just had the whole thing totally flat. Go back and check that out very close to the beginning. We have only changing between... Um, the the plates and I, I think you hear the differences even more clearly there so go back and check out the beginning of this if you're here on the live stream um and just joining us late uh hello to all of you guys for joining we got david gilden here we got uh, wim van doren skeleton pete member of the channel joining us thanks for being here fred dimmick mark Rafino, david gilden uh la winter gabriel bloom thanks for being here tanner thanks for becoming a member of the channel great to have you here tanner um, let's go ahead and answer some of these questions coming in. Tanner asks, is this live now? And the answer is yes. We are doing yes. this completely live. This is a, a whole new format for us. Audio examples live. I hope it's coming out well for you guys. Uh, Tanner says, is this a super plate? The one that came out like last year? Yes. I think you unveiled it to the world at NAM last year, which was April. Um, it was announced, but not this released year, technically. then. Oh, you're right. April 2023. Thank you. We don't it remember was... time anymore after COVID. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, right. It was announced April 2023 and then released a little bit more recently. I feel like late yes. this summer, maybe? Got it. Uh, yeah, somewhere somewhere in there. It was All a soft right. launch. Mm -hmm. Jamie Velez says, run it through plug-in doctor. Run it through your ears because this is not one of these things where the differences between these plate models and between the different input models is so severe that like, this is a just listen kind of thing. You don't need yeah. to like find out what, uh, uh, see if it's really nulling or whatever. It's like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I mean, we're, you know, we're making music here and we yes. make this plugin. This, this plugin is made for music lovers. You know, it's yeah. not a scientist plugin in my opinion. So everything mm -hmm. is fun to play with and great sounding. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Jerry Romero asks, sorry if I missed this, but is there a way to lock the mix knob while changing presets? Yes. All right, let's Absolutely. Uh, take it over to you. Hold on one second. Let me do it so I can pull up your screen again. And here we go. Yes. Go so it. our mix knob is available to be locked. If you hold down control option on Mac and click on mix, it will turn it red, which means now if I flip between presets, mix stays the same. Now on, on Windows, it would be control alt. So just mm. play around with that, hit two buttons, control option or control alt on, on Windows and click on mix knob. It's a great feature and it works across all the other Soundways plugins as well. So if you are interested in setting a mix at a specific percentage and go through a lot of presets, not just Superplate, but all of our other plugins, this works as well. 
Brilliant. Are there any other controls that have that kind of functionality around presets or is Mix the one that does it? Oh, I see. You can lock practically any of them. So you could uh, lock... The... Some of them cannot be locked, which, like, I don't think you can lock these. But uh, Right, that styles, would make any yeah, sense. Pre-delay, modulation, you know, all decay stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just hold down Control Option or Control Alt and click and see which things turns red. Oh, that's so cool. So you can dial in your EQ settings and then go through them or dial in the width, presets. dial in the mix, yeah, yeah, and then go through the presets. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Too many plugins have not had that for too long, so love it. I imagine, so the ones that are not locked because they're so essential for the presets changing would be the type of reverb, the yep. uh, input stage, and maybe the length too is not lockable because that's part of changing the preset. Uh, it's It's locked. Oh, so you can lock, uh, I see. So you, you could lock, do it with yes. Length. You absolutely oh, so can so, lock the reverb. Wow, very cool. So you could have the same length for all of them. Yes, now it's still would be changing things like pre-delay. Awesome. Oh, yeah. that is cool. Dig it. Yeah. All right. Let's check out some uh, more questions here. Um, let's see. Uh Next one is L.A. Winter asking, is there a reason why control scroll versus just scroll for changing the Q value? Oh, yeah. So if you're just scrolling, it it's very hard to, um, like, I, I'm, I'm scrolling right now, but it is very, like, if I'm not holding down anything, it works. Mm -hmm. Oops, give me a second. But if we hold down control, it won't change the actual frequency anymore. So I can just scroll and change the cue. You see, uh, my cursor gotcha. is rolling around. But if I don't do it, and I and I and I do it, and I do scroll, sometimes I might move. Oops, my hand got moved. So then you change gotcha. the frequency as well. So control yes. means freeze the frequency in place. So you don't Correct. need to ch do control to do the uh, widening and narrowing. But yes. if you want to hold the frequency while you're just scrolling, Oops. you hit control for that. Yeah. And I've got it. Makes sense. Yeah. So it's very oh. good to um kind of like. Find the frequency that you like, and then hold down control and start doing this. All right, Ellie this, Winter. This dance. Ellie Winter has another question, which is a very similar question to the one that I asked uh, the first time I saw this thing. I'm going to try a shot at answering this myself, and tell me if I do it right. He says, um, "Does the reverb buffer reset when it gets ducked?" And I think the answer is there. Kind of yes, but no, because what happens is you're shortening the reverb. It's not that you're emptying the reverb buffer. It's that, say, you set a crazy long 12-second reverb. Now, when the threshold gets triggered, it's shortening it from a 12-second reverb to whatever you selected, say, uh, a half-second reverb. So yep. now, over the course, the course of a half-second, the reverb ends. So you are deciding how fast... It's not that you're emptying the reverb buffer. It's that you're making the reverb shorter and you get to yes. choose how much shorter it becomes. So have I described that yes. accurately? That's absolutely correct. So it's not that the reverb goes away. It's that think of think of it like, you know, a transient signal has that first peak, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then you put a threshold on that peak. Anything above the threshold gets a shorter decay than the things below it. So mm -hmm. it changes the literal time second value of the reverb, depending on how loud your signal is. Gotcha. And the shortest it will go would be to a half second. So there's Correct. not like a, 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 a eliminate the buffer completely option. It's a make it go as short as a half second, which is yes. pretty short in the world of a reverb because there's yes. uh, plenty of decay happening there. All right. Let yes. me see if I can get through a couple more questions and then we will uh, call it a day. Um, David Gilden says, please have Tony come back and do another deep dive. Next time, the Pan Man is his re request. Uh, so we'd love to have you back favorite. on the channel again. We have specific requests for you. So uh, let's make it a habit. I'm glad you guys like me. <laughs> <laughs> How could they not, Tony? All right, let's uh, keep on going here. Benj says it sounds great and that he's going to need to watch it back. You should. Um, really tight presentation here and you really get a good sense for how to use the thing and a, and really a, a good sense early on in the presentation for just how dramatic yes. some of these differences are. Tanner by the Sea says, I'm downloading it right now and it's awesome. Great to hear. Benj asks, question, when does JC, that's me, get his own signature sound toys plugin? 
hey, if you guys want to work on the mastering rack one of these days and uh, we'll do a whole bunch of it. Because I wouldn't be surprised if what to, if um, Ken has like a library of all of this old mastering gear in his museum of stuff. And if you ever wanted to do that and, you know, make the Coletti signature mastering rack, or if I could just... Um, be a beta tester for you guys. That's all that I ask. I don't need to be. Uh, you have uh, my you know. email. All right, I'm here. I'm I'm happy to help with this stuff. All right, uh, Paul Lucas says little plate was already great, but super is super. Thank True you. Stuff. All right, Hugo MB says, "Oh my goodness, never knew about that mix knob. So helpful." Yes. Uh, Thompson, I'm not sure if I understand this concept uh, comment, but he says 757 VA exclamation point. I don't know if I know what that means. Uh, Paul Lucas is very helpful. Chris Adelman, sorry, I missed the lock thing. What are the keystrokes for Mac sure. OS to lock stuff? Control and option. So hold down control and option and click on the parameter and you will be able to see it turn red, which means it is locked when you flip between presets. Gotcha. So control option on Mac and probably control, control alt on alt PC. And Windows. Gotcha. All right. And let's see. Uh, LA Winters, uh, he, we answered his question about whether it's the buffer stopping. He says, wow, that is way better than the buffer stopping, which is exactly the reaction I had. I think LA Winter and I are secretly twins because he had the same questions <laughs> and the same reactions. It's as, as if you had an engineer literally turning the decay down as you go louder. So now it's a dialogue between like, essentially the machine and the human. Mm, very cool. L.A. Winter asks, anything similar to be added to duck, uh, ducking-wise to Echo Boy? Wow, that would be crazy to have an Echo Boy update and Echo Boy 2.0 one of these days. My I lips mean, are sealed. <laughs> I can't say a thing, but that would be cool. All right. Yeah. Paul Lucas says, I vote for a crystallizer deep dive. So you're uh, encouraged to come back on the channel to walk us Lovely. through more plugins. I'd Chris love to Adelman. Do it. <laughs> Great. Chris Adelman says, Nice. Thanks, guys. So I think we've gotten through all the questions here. Oh, yes. there's a comment we should make, which is you had something to say about um, a reason that they should download this now and try it yes. out. Because oh, yeah. you, you're going to here. I think you're going to reveal a secret to people on the stream because ordinarily you can download sound toys plugins. You can try anything out for free for 30 days over at sound toys. Days. I for the highly entire encourage. bundle. Yep. Awesome. For the and you could do it with, bundle. you could do it with the entire bundle, try them all at once. Um, or if you want to just do it with one plugin, and like really get to know Superplate and then do another and then do another, you're welcome. But here's the thing with Sound Toys. All of the plugins, they are priced so well. And this is going to be me totally shilling for you guys. And I'm not saying this only because Aww. you guys are sponsors of the channel, but I really believe this. There are some plugins there that are like such a killer value. Um, if you spend a hundred bucks on them or 150 bucks on them or whatever it is, but then you guys have like between 20 and 30 plugins. And if you were to do that with all of them, you know, it would add up over time. The bundle is such a steal. I mean, it's a fraction of buying all these plugins. It costs like, I don't know, 20 or 25%. Yeah, it's incredible. So yeah. what's the extra reason that people should download this thing and try it out now? Is there an extra reason you can reveal? Of course, because annually we do a Black Friday sale when it gets closer to uh, Thanksgiving. So what you can expect is that we will have a sale coming up. Now, um, the exact dates, I am a little hesitant to reveal it right now, but feel free to sign up for our email listings and make it, make your account today at soundtoys.com so you'll get that marketing email. But what I can say is that starting from October 18th, this is this month coming up, if you download our bundle and try the demo um, in a month, you should be able to catch the sale and then have already used it for a month, know that you love it, and then buy it at a great price usually uh, yeah so uh we we tend to go aggressive for black friday so it won't cost the way it does so super play retails for 149 but during black friday you know yeah. that number goes low i hear you i've got to say i i think it's worth 149 easily just to buy it now if you guys don't want to have to wait for a sale well first yeah. of all go ahead and download and try it out and if you're catching this in the future and it's like March or something, and you're like, oh, I missed my Black Friday chance. If you spend $150 on Superplate um, and you then use it for the next six months, you're going to be like, uh, that didn't hurt and this is awesome and I'm glad I have it. So um, and go we, get the whole sound. we do a great bundle. upgrade price as well. So if you use Superplate and you want to upgrade into our other plugins, 
um, are pricing are very reasonable to upgrade into the full bundle. So there's always an option. So, but I will say though, the demo trial, the 30 day trial is a great way to get a taste of all of our different plugins. Cause right now Superplay marks the 22nd plugin in the entire mm-hmm. lineup. So mm-hmm. that's, you know, instantly you have 22 more plugins in your DW you can try out for a whole month before Black Friday. Amazing. All right. Uh, last couple uh, things here. Comments coming in. Ben says he's got to go. Be we'll be watching the f- uh, back in full. Great. I'm glad to have you here. Tanner you says, so I'm getting ready to put this to work right now. David Gilden says, and here's a request for you. Please add an insert in the Echo Boy feedback loop. Pitch mm. shifted echoes. We want them to happen. So uh, that's his request is an insert in the feedback loop. Chris Adelman says, I have all of them and love that the website has additional presets from top engineers and artists. So they're going to continue to make those. I know that they are. I've uh, heard secret rumblings that you'll find out more <laughs> about in the future, I'm sure. I mean, I want the Justin preset pack to come out. Hey, you know, I'm doing mostly mastering these days. So like it's, it's, it's hard to take some of your True. most, the, the tools that I love the most, like I'm not going to come out with a decapitator and devil lock preset for mastering. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. All right. But, uh, I could do some crazy sound design stuff. Uh, Chris Adam and I, I do know how to mix. I could, yeah, I could do a whole bunch of things based on like a stem mix. Cause sometimes I'm remastering from stems for clients and I would definitely use your stuff a lot in that context. So mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something we can look at. Uh, Fred uh, Dimmick says, very informative. Thank you. Got the bundle this summer. Love them all. L.A. Winter says, I already have the whole bundle and I absolutely love them all. Thompson Music Group says, I have the bundle and it's great. Uh, Tanner by the Sea says, oh, that's great news. And David Gilden says, buy the whole Sound Toys bundle. You will be happy. Smiley face. So Yes. It's my Desert Island bundle choice. If I somehow got, you know, I don't know why I would ever be deserted on an island with a computer that runs Sound Toys. But if I did, that's, and they're like, if there's like, you need to make music to survive Mm -hmm. and you can only pick one bundle, I'd be like Sound Toys 5. Yep, yep. Good stuff. It is the most fun. And everything, here's the other thing about Sound Toys is everything that you guys make, none of them are redundant with stock plugins in your DAW. So, like you could get the it whole compliments. bundle. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you guys uh, don't like, if you already have your workhorse plugins, no matter what your workhorse plugins are, this is totally addition to that. Yeah. All right. I want to keep this under an hour because, um, I, I feel like for a plugin demo, we shouldn't go to a full hour, but it's been so much fun. We've learned a lot about the way different reverb sound and so much cool stuff you can do with this. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today, Tony. Thank, Thank you, you guys Justin. for hanging out with us. Yeah. Yes, great thank to have you, you guys all. here. Everybody's watching. Just thank you so much for coming. All right. Great. Thank you again, Tony. Thank you guys. See you next time. See you next time.